Okay, hey guys, we're back. So last time we messed around with the lighting on our game object a little bit and added a rigid body component, which I left as a bit of a teaser for what we're going to do now. But just before we do that, let's um, mess around with a couple more lighting settings that I did uh, miss out last time. So now we've got our uh, game view open. We can have our scene view open, but our game view demonstrates what we're about to change right now. So if we go to this window that says, well, if we go to this tab that says window, we can just open that and then go to lighting on the drop down. Now um, we see that our environmental lighting, like the default is set to skybox, which isn't actually something that we want. We want it to be none because the only light that we want is from like what we dictate. So our directional lighting should be the only lighting in the scene. So if we click on this and then press the delete key, we can get rid of that. Now if you look down here, you you can see um, the difference. If I press Control Z, you'll see the difference there. I'll press the delete key again and you'll see the difference. And we just want to make sure that our skybox material is set to none, uh, which brings up this light, nice little menu that says the ambient color is complete black. Now let's go back to um, just adjusting our lighting for these new settings. So we're going to take the rear light and we're just going to round that up to the uh, first decimal point. Well, uh, round it weirdly to the first decimal point just to make sure it's nice and uh, a round number. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to this light which I believe to be the front light. Yeah, and we're just going to make that a nice round point. Five. There we go. Uh, just back to the sort of intensity that we had when we did have the ambient lighting around. Now as you see there's a little bit of a black patch in the middle here which I don't really want. So I'm going to tilt this light on the x-axis so that it uh, lights up the top of the object. So if we go like that. And that makes it a lot smoother by like looking at the um, the other edges it creates a nice smoother gradient that we can barely see but just enough that we can be like okay there's less lighting coming from the front than there is from the back and side so we're going to take that to 15 and we're just going to press press enter now we're just going to mess with this side light here and we're going to up the intensity on it a little bit. I think I'm going to take that to 1, the intensity of 1, because we have no ambient light to support these lights so let's just up the intensity on a couple of things. And because I feel that there's more light coming from this side than this side, which it just didn't affect that one. I'm just going to leave the intensity of this light at 0.75 just just to make a, a different balance in the lighting instead of having everything completely symmetrical. Okay, so last time we left off I added a rigid body component to our player here who doesn't actually have a name. Let's rename him to player object just to make sure it's more easy to identify it when we're actually adding some code, some scripts <coughs> to make everything work as we want it to. Now, we have the rigid body component right here, but there's something wrong with our player. Every time we hit the play button, that happens. Now, um, there's only one reason for this, it's not too big, just uh, a nice little cliffhanger there. It's using gravity right now. So, as you can see in the rigid body component, uh, Unity has added physics to our object and it's colliding with the background that's why it's not just falling through into nothing which you might experience from some uh, less than finished games. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to uncheck uh, use gravity and then hit the play button and just like that our player stays you know levitated in the air like we want it to. So the reason why we have a rigid body component is so that we can identify the player to manipulate it later. This also came with a sphere collider which allows us to essentially make a hitbox for our object and we can change the size of it um, 
however much we please. So if we're being, if we decide to be mean to the player, and we can change it to one and have it uh, unrealistically large. Point five yeah, is where it rests nicely on the player, and if we're going to be of not point not five, and if we're going to be kind of um, generous. And if we're going to be generous about them, then we could take it to point not 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 five or something, and our collider seems to sort of disappear. But I like it at point five because it seems like we just rest on the skin of our player, which is quite realistic because uh, you know as soon as anything touches our player, uh, a certain set of events that we will dictate later will play out. So that is it for this part. I was going to go into uh, different kinds of colliders, but I think that this object just came with this uh, sphere collider. I mean, we can go into um, add component, physics, and we can take a look at the different colliders that are available to us. Here we've got a box collider, so if your uh, player is more on the square side, you can use that. Um, Add another component maybe here we've got the we've got a sphere collider already capsule collider um, which is good for general kinds of things so um, say if you have an object that isn't quite round isn't quite even you can mess around with some capsule collider settings to um, make it fit what you need to do so as you can see if I had a tall figure say I had a tall and lean figure in my game then I could do that with a capsule collider now if we add a mesh collider that basically wraps itself around our object and I think we have to provide a um, material Oop. Uh, we have to provide sort of the mesh of the object for that to work and here we have just a bunch of different colliders and we won't really go into those because the only one that applies to us right now is um, the sphere collider but I would recommend um, looking into using a mesh collider or a capsule collider if you're going into more detail with what your player looks like and um, how your game is going to play out so if we just want to remove these components here we can just go to this little cog and we can go to remove component uh, same with the box collider here remove component mesh collider remove component any other colliders or anything that I've put in no. so right now we've got our player set up nicely so that we can control it later we've added a rigid body we've added a sphere collider to act as the hitbox for our object and in the next lesson we'll be looking at how we're going to move our object around the scene uh, using a mouse or arrow keys. I'll give you both options because uh, I want this to be as interactive as possible. Anyway, thank you guys for watching the video. Uh, if you liked it then leave a like. If you um, want to leave a comment then you can do so and I will see you guys later.